Praise God. We're going to continue now with Daniel 70 weeks. Coming from Daniel 9, 1 to 27. At the events recorded in Revelation 6 and 1 to Revelation 19, 21 are connected with the last or seventh eighth week of Daniel 70 weeks. It is necessary that we stop here and explain what is meant by Daniel's 70 weeks. The prophet Daniel had been 68 years, and this is B.C. 538 in Babylon, and by a study of the prophecy of Jeremiah, Jeremiah 25 and 11, he discovered that the 70 years captivity of his people was, was nearing its end, and so he set his face unto the Lord to seek by prayer and supplication, Daniel 9 and 3, to know the exact time of its ending. And while he was praying, the angel Gabriel appeared to enlighten him, Daniel 9, 20 to 23. Daniel was concerned about the expiration of the 70th year of the captivity and the rest restoration of his people to the Palestine and the rebuilding of the city of Jerusalem, and all the temple. But the angel Gabriel came to disclose to him something more important than that. While he doubtless informed Daniel that God will fulfill his promise as to the 70 years of the captivity, which, as we know, he did, he also made known to Daniel that that would not end the trouble of Israel that while the Jews were to return to Jerusalem at the end of the 70 years of captivity, there was a longer period to elapse before the kingdom would be restored to them. A period of 70 weeks. Wow. 70 weeks are determined upon thy people, Daniel's people, the Jews, and upon the holy city, Jerusalem, to finish the transgressions and to make an end of sin and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandments to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seventy seven weeks and three scores and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublesome time. And after three scores and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself and the people, Roman, of the prince that shall come, the Antichrist, shall destroy the city and the sanctuary and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and until the end of the war, desolation are determined, and he, the Antichrist, shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, the last or seventieth week, and in the midst of the week, he, the Antichrist, shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abomination, the abomination of desolation spoken of by Christ, Matthew twenty four fifteen, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate, Daniel nine twenty four to twenty seven. This vision of the seventy weeks is the most important revelation in many ways made in the scriptures. We are here told that this period of 70 weeks was determined upon Daniel's people, the Jews, and upon the holy city, Jerusalem. This is very important. It discloses the fact that the 70 weeks have nothing to do with the Gentiles or the church, but only with the Jews and Jerusalem. It also discloses another important fact that the 70 weeks only cover the period when the Jews are dwelling in their own land and does not cover the present period of their dispersion. We are told in verse 24 
that these seventy weeks were determined for a sixfold purpose. And we're going to go through the purpose and we're going to end this lesson. One, to finish the transgression. It is the transgression of Israel that is here referred to. And the finishing of it will be the turning away of ungodliness from Jacob. Romans 11, 26-27 The transgression of Israel has not yet come to an end and will not until they as a nation shall be converted. 2. To make an end of sin. The margin reads to seal up sin. The sins of Israel. This may refer to the author of Israel's sin, Satan, who shall at that time be sealed up in the pit. Revelation 20, 1 and 3. 1 through 3. 3. To make reconciliation for iniquity. This refers to Israel's iniquity and its rejection of their Messiah. While atonement was made for their sin on the cross, it a application to Israel as a nation awaits the day when they shall look on him whom they pierced, Zechariah 2 and 10, and a fountain shall be opened to the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. For sin and uncleanliness, Zechariah 13 and 1, and a nation, the Jewish nation, shall be born again in a day. Isaiah 66 and 8. 4. To bring in everlasting righteousness, when the transgressions of Israel have come to an end, and her sins are sealed up, then everlasting righteousness shall be brought in. The king will come, and the kingdom be restored to Israel, and the millennium will be here, and the knowledge of the Lord shall cover the earth, as the water covers the sea, Habakkuk 2 and 14. To seal up the vision and prophecy is five. When the transgressions of Israel have ceased, and they have uninterpreted communion with God, there will no longer be any need for visions or prophets, praise God. It is a noteworthy fact that vision and prophecy has been confined to the Jewish race. 6. The Anointed, the Most Holy This probably refers to anointing of the most holy place, or the holies of holies, of the Millennium Temple, described by Ezekiel, Ezekiel 41. There is a great significance in this announcement, for although the tabernacle of Moses was anointed, Leviticus 8 and 10, there is no mention of such a ceremony in the consecration of either Solomon's temple or the temple of Zerubbabel, for those buildings were considered merely as continuation of the Mosianic tabernacle. But when the king comes back and sits upon the throne of his father David, there is to be a magnificent temple erected, the like of which has neither as yet been seen on this planet of ours. There will be no Ark of the Covenant with its mercy seat in the most holy place of the Millennium Tabernacle, Jeremiah 3.16. But in its place will stand the royal throne on which the branch, the Messiah, shall sit as King Priest. Zechariah 6.12-13 and whose anointing is here referred to. Now as the fulfillment of this sixfold purpose of the 70th week synchronizes with the things that shall happen at the close of this dispensation and that are described in Revelation 6 and 1, 1921, it is clear that the last or seventh week of Daniel's 70 weeks covers the time period of Revelation 6 and 1 and 1921 and confirms the claim that that the period is Jewish and has nothing to do with the church. To prove this, it is only necessary to outline Daniel's 70 weeks. The 70 weeks are divided into three periods 
of seven weeks, praise God, and 62 weeks and one week. They cover the time from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem, which was the 14th day of the month, Nisan, March, B.C., 44-5, to the second day, the revelation of the second coming of Christ, the first period, seven weeks, referred to the time required to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, which was 49 years thus giving us the key to the meaning of the word week. For if, for if seven weeks are equal to 49 years, then one week is equal to seven years. Now we are told that from the going forth of the commandment to the restored and rebuilt Jerusalem, B.C. 445, unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks, and three scores and two weeks, or sixty-nine weeks. For if one week is equal to seven years, seven times sixty-nine, or four hundred and eighty-three years. Now Jesus as Messiah, the prince, rode in triumph into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, April 2nd, A.D. 30. The difference in time between B.C. 445 and A.D. 30 is 475 years, but as we have seen, 69 weeks equals 483 years, a difference of 8 years. How are we to explain this difference? Praise God. The 475 years between B.C. 445 and A.D. 30 are Julian or astronomical years of 365 and a quarter day each. But when we reduce them to calendar years of 360 days each, the years used in the scriptures, we find that we have exactly 483 years of 360 days each. This proves that there was no break between the first and second period of the 70 weeks, and that the prophecy that there should be 69 weeks to the coming of the Messiah, the Prince, was literally fulfilled. Now, as 69 weeks of Daniel's 70 weeks are already expired, and all that was prophesied to occur during those 70 weeks has not yet been fulfilled, it stands to reason that the things unfulfilled are still future and must be fulfilled in the remaining one week. And that, that one week shall be seven years long, for it must be of the same length as the other week. This then gives us the length of time of the reign of the prince that shall come the antichrist who we are told in verse 27 daniel 9 27 shall make a covenant with the jews for one week seven years the last or 70th week and that in the middle of the week he shall break the covenant and cause the sacrifice and oblation that the jews will have restored to cease and then the overspreading of abomination that maketh desolation shall continue until the end of the week, as this is just what is foretold will occur during the reign of the Antichrist. Second Thessalonians two, three and four. We see that the period between Revelation six and one and Revelation nineteen twenty one that we are now about to study is the third period of one week of Daniel's 70 weeks, and that it is to last seven years. From this, we see that while there was no time space between the first and second period of the 70 weeks, there is a time space between the second and third period, or the 69th and 70 weeks of already, A.D. 1919. 1889 years, or the present church age. 
this was hidden to the church, should not fall to watch, should not fail to watch. Amen. And so we're going to conclude this lesson. And then our next lesson should be the seven seals. The seven seals.